sing his oath, his covenant. His oath, his covenant is blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Oh, in Christ the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sing together when he shall come. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground. Jesus Christ, our solid rock, our Savior, our King forever. When He came and gave His life upon that cross, He did it once for all. It was finished. How I love the voice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He declared His work is finished. He has spoken this hope to me Though the sun has ceased its shine Though the war of fear has lost Christ had triumphed over evil It was finished upon that It has been broken Jesus paid the price for me For the pardon He has offered Great the welcome that I receive Only I approach my Father Clothed in Jesus' righteousness There is no more guilt to carry it was finished upon that cross. Death was once my great opponent. Fear once had a hold on me. But the Son who died to save us Rose that we would be free indeed This is true. Sing it again. Death was once my great opponent Fear once had a hold on me But the Son who died to save us that we would be free indeed Yes, He rose That we would be free Free from every plan of darkness Free to live and free to love Death is dead and Christ is risen It was finished a passing onward Onward to eternal glory to my Savior and my God I rejoice in Jesus' victory It was finished upon that cross 
It was finished upon that cross. It was finished upon that cross. Our Savior Jesus Christ gave his life so that we could live forever. This hope is certain. It is definite. Sing tonight, how great the chasm. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Sing the cross. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. its grip on me and you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living sing again hallelujah hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope my living hope then came the that seal the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave as no claim on me jesus yours is the Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Our living hope and in Him and Him alone victory in Jesus. This salvation that is everlasting. I heard an old, old story. I was saved again from glory. His blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. Good evening and welcome to Community Bible Church. Uh, if you are streaming, I'd like to say welcome and especially to our first time guests. If you would, take a second, look down in the seat back pocket in front of you. There's a connect card. Fill that out and please give it to me or to one of the other pastors tonight. For now, please turn and greet someone next to you. The sure and steady anchor in the fury of the storm. When the winds of doubt blow through me and my sails have all been torn. In the suffering, in the sorrow, when my seeking hopes are few, I will hold.
Christ, our sure and steady anchor, and he's our rock and our redeemer. As we sing this last song, children, you are dismissed to Honor Club tonight, and next week we'll begin children's choirs. Children, you may go. Oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer, greatest treasure of my longing soul. My God, like you, there is no other true delight is found in you alone. Your grace, a oh well too deep to fathom. Your love exceeds the heaven's reach. Your truth found a perfect wisdom my highest good and my unending need sing again oh lord my oh lord my rock and my redeemer Strong defender of my weary heart, my soul to fight the cruel deceiver, and my shield against his hateful darts. My song when enemies surround me, my hope. When tides of sorrow rise, my joy, when trials are abounding, your faithfulness, my refuge in the rock and my redeemer gracious savior of my ruined life my guilt and cross laid on your shoulders in my place you suffered bled and died you rose the grave and death are conquered. You broke my bonds of sin and shame. Sing your rose. You
and my Redeemer. May all my days bring glory to your name. May all my days bring glory to your name. You may be seated this evening. Would you please bow with me as we pray? Father, first and foremost, we're thankful for the blessing to just wake up with air in our lungs. We give thanks for all of our members and people who are not members but are Christians in the kingdom and uh, who prayed for our teams and gave sacrificially, financially. And Father, we'd ask that you would bless our time together, keep it fruit, uh, fruitful, and we are thankful for all the blessings that you provide us, and it's in your son's name that we pray, amen. From Genesis, Genesis to Revelation, God, more than anything, wants to reestablish a personal relationship with mankind. That relationship was broken in Eden when sin was introduced into our lineage through disobedience. But God made a provision for resolving that sin through his son, Jesus Christ. Our mission is to fulfill Christ's commission, as read in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which says, "'Go therefore and make disciples of all nations,' baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. We, have, we who have been blessed to come to a saving knowledge of Christ are now burdened, burdened with sharing that blessing in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, Acts 1-8, the Great Commission. Our equivalent is our own Beaufort, South Carolina, the United States, and throughout the world. Community Bible Church takes it, its commission seriously, and by the Lord's grace, we are now supporting over 400 missionaries and mission agencies. And we seek up men and women, both young and old, who may be called to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, as found in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. With that being said, I'd like to introduce our panel. From left to right, we have Victor Vitu, who's our upwards director, Wes Cowan, Wade Bales, Charles Wade Bales, and Virgil Fripp. Please give him a big round of applause for being here tonight. Our first question goes to you, Victor, and it is, what is the Upwards Ministry's purpose and what is your role in that ministry? Thank you, Walter. I'm sure there are many in attendance tonight who not only know the mission and the purpose of Upwards Sports Ministry, but also have contributed or actually contribu contributing to it right now as we actually just kicked off our full season of flag football and cheerleading. But I also do recognize that there may be some of you here tonight who perhaps just seen the upward table and the atrium, you know, seen countless promotional materials we have across the building, announcements, whether it is from Pastor Carl or in your Sunday bulletin. And it's just a blessing to have this opportunity tonight to share about Upward Sports and its mission. The purpose and the mission of Upward Sports Ministry is to use the power of sports to share the gospel and promote the discovery of Jesus in our community. If you're like me, then you know it's nice to have a pool that sport gives. And then it's even better when we show up with Christ and make it something a lot bigger and a lot better than just sports. We use sports as intentional ministry outreach. And uh, it's not just a church league or a church program. We strive to be the best in the commu community when it comes to sports, but moreover, we strive to introduce people to Christ and help them grow in relationship with him by connecting the families to the church. Uh, as far as my role as a director of Upward Sports Ministry, in short, it is to serve alongside and support those who carry out sports ministry. Or um, simply put, in other words, build relationships, grow in faith, and serve together with so many like-minded and wonderful people. I believe we have a video um, with our most recent season of Upper Sports Soccer where we had 270 kids 
participating, of which over 100 had no church affiliation. Thank you. Upward Sports Soccer. Thank you, volunteers. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, up next, we have Mr. Wade Bales, who is our team leader at Camp Grace. Mr. Bales, what is the ministry's purpose at Camp Grace, and what is your role at that ministry? All right, who's been to Camp Grace before? Raise your hand. See a couple people. Awesome, awesome. Camp Grace is uh, stationed on a 300 plus acre property down south of Macon, Georgia. Um, the Pridemore family runs that, and we've been partners with them through our church for a number of years. Uh, the Camp Grace in this year was interesting because uh, Frank and Jan Malure were always our ambassadors to Camp Grace, and Jennifer and I were fortunate enough to mentor with them and take their place this year and it was a it was a really a fun trip but let's get to the mission the camp grace grace mission is to transform the lives of urban underserved youth through grace with overnight camp um, specifically the goal is to change their environment change their hearts through the gospel of jesus christ um, it's is a camp for sure this year was a six-week camp um, our role, well, let's get through some stats first. So this year, a six-week camp, they ran a little over 1,000 campers uh, went through Camp Grace this year total. Um, of those, we had over 400 uh, professions of faith. The week we were there, we had 152 teens uh, the, the last week or the week six of camp. Um, that represented nine ministries, and I'll talk about that briefly in a second. So Camp Grace, Grace functions uh, reaching urban, urban youth through its mission or ministry partners. And camp this year consisted of 60 different ministry partners uh, bringing kids to Camp Grace. Um, our role 
is to provide operational support for the Camp Grace team while campers are present. Um, we're also responsible for running one of the activities that the campers can plug into or plug into throughout the week. Um, that's the main point where we have direct um, contact in helping the campers through the activity, can converse with them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, our total campers for that week, which was new for us, those of you who've been to Camp Grace, maybe you were there during a teen week. Um, our group had not been there through uh, during a teen week before, and so um, most of the teens were Virgil's teens, or a lot of the teens were, but we had groups, uh, we had nine different ministries represented the week we were there. So we had um, young men and women from South Georgia all the way to from Beaufort, South Carolina. Um, we have a short video too, it was probably a bit too long, so I think they shortened it up, but here we go, here's Camp Grace. This is from the last week, the week we were there, week six of 2024. Thank you very much, Mr. Bales. 
Up next, we have uh, Virgil Fripp, who represents regional. Is that right, Virgil? Am I saying that right? Or are you the regional director? I know Virgil's the man when it comes to Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So Virgil is the team lead for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, so Virgil, same question to you, sir. What is your ministry's purpose, and what is your role in that ministry of Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Thanks, Walt. Um, I work with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, for short, FCA. And the role that I have in it is pretty simple. Um, I'm the I'm the I'm the middleman, if you if you will. Um, we try to work through and to coaches. We understand the influence that coaches have on athletes. They have a tremendous influence on them. Um, at the end of the games, you'll see them. They're hanging around, waiting on the parents to come. Some of the parents, some of the coaches have to take the kids home because the parents don't come for them. Um, look, the coach says to jump. The athlete wants to know how high. And so they're, they're very influential in that. And so our design is, is to work through these coaches. If we can win the coaches to faith in Christ, then we have a better shot at winning these um, athletes to faith in Christ. And the athletes are like icons. I mean, everyone looks up to them. And so when they are willing to stand up and, and take a stand for Christ, then it opens up even more opportunities around the school, in their homes, um, during the games. Uh, we try to get them in there, and we try to get them to pray after the games. This is something that I felt that needed to take place. And so um, I think maybe the past year or two, um, with the relationship that I've been building with the coaches, we've been able to get the players at the end of the game to go to the 50-yard line and, and just pray. You know, the, the stands are filled, and everyone watching these um, gridiron guys on their knees before Christ um, thanking God for the game, thanking God for the competitiveness of the game. We're not, we're not trying to make weak athletes, but what we are trying to make is um, athletes that want to worship Christ, just, just want to love Christ and, wanna be, and, and, and are unashamed to be able to tell people that, look, I love Jesus. Um, in fact, the video that I'm going to show, I, I wanted to show something. It, it, you may not be able to, to capture the fullness of what's going on, but I, I, I will tell you this. This happened last week. Uh, we had four teams to come out, and with a total of maybe about 150 players, including their coaches as well. And this is my thing. I, we, we pray. We win, we lose, whatever it is, we're going to honor God at the end of the game. And so all these teams came together on the 50-yard line, and one of the coaches took over, and, 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 they, and they prayed. Um, all the coaches were there. So you, you got this. I love this video. Y'all check it out. Thank you very much, Virgil. So, Wes, coming back to you, sir, for Upwards, what are some opportunities that you have to share the gospel, and could you walk us through what that may look like for you in the Upwards ministry? So for Upward, we have four main ways that we get the gospel out to our kids. And probably the most powerful uh, way is that every week at practice, a coach is going to sit down with this team, and he's going to lead them in a devotion. And that devotion is designed to be uh, for the kids to be able to ask questions and answer questions and just be very interactive and to introduce them to who Jesus is, introduce them to the Bible. 
Uh, and then at the game, at the end of that week on Saturdays, uh, either Pastor Matt or one of our other uh, CBC pastors is going to lead a devotion that's specifically designed to reinforce whatever devotion that coach was leading in practice that week. And so that's going to go on throughout there, and it's very um, strategic in introducing uh, kids to the Bible and who Jesus is, and then at the very end of the season uh, uh, for their need for a Savior. At the very end of each season, we have an end-of-the-season celebration. Uh, in that celebration, we always invite someone, whether it be a juggler, a magician, whatever, to come out and present. And they always use that to uh, provide a, a powerful presentation of the gospel. And this is not only for our kids, but also for their parents to get to see that. But throughout the season, we also use Upward as a way to invite kids to all of our different church events. Um, for flag football, it coincides with the Awanas. So our flag football coaches, many of whom volunteer for Awanas as well, are going to be out there inviting kids for Awanas. During soccer season, we're inviting kids to the Easter Extravaganza or to VBS. And so we use Upward as a way to plug these kids who are not in a church and invite them to our other church functions as well. Thank you very much, Wes. Uh, Charles Wade, same question to you, sir. At Camp Grace, what opportunities do you have to share the gospel and can you please share with the members, what does that look like uh, for you down at Camp Grace? So uh, in each of the cabins, they have uh, two different periods during the day where they have a cabin devotional time. Um, and I really stress to all of the counselors that uh, at the beginning of the week, they should start in Genesis and take the kids through uh, the entire story of the gospel before they get to Thursday night. Um, on Thursday night, we do a presentation of the gospel. We start with a reenactment of the crucifixion. And then Pastor Dave, uh, who founded Camp Grace, comes out and gives a, a really powerful um, expression of the gospel. Uh, and then they are invited to make a personal decision. And then uh, they go have a conversation with their counselors and they make sure that they truly understand the gospel. Um, additionally, I, um, we really like to stress with our counselors that they are to hold Christ at the center of everything they do. Uh, and through that, there are a lot of opportunities that come up uh, during the week where the kids will start asking questions. Uh, hey, Mr. So-and-so, why do you do this this way? Or uh, why, why do you act so different around uh, everyone than most of the people I see? Uh, so there's many opportunities woven throughout the week and then ultimately leading up to Thursday night. Thank you very much, uh, Charles Wade. Uh, Mr. Fripp, so the same question to you, sir. What are some opportunities you have? And uh, for those of you who don't know, Virgil Fripp, being that he uh, works side by side with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, he's in the schools in our county. So it's very unique. Each one of these ministries upwards Camp Grace and Fellowship of Christian Athletes are, are dealing specifically with children, but Virgil's unique in the fact that he's in the school every day in our county. So Virgil, question to you, sir, what are those opportunities that you have for sharing the gospel with kids and teachers, and what does that look like for you? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I don't want you guys to, to be sidetracked by the name. It says Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and so we primarily deal with the coaches and the athletes, but the ministry goes beyond that. You know, you sit like, I go to the games, so you sit in the stands and the parents are in the stands. You get to talk to the parents. Um, you get to talk to the administrative staff. I know all of my principals. They all know I love Jesus. They allow me in the school. I get to talk to them. I invite them to church. So there's always opportunities beyond the coaches and the athletes. That's, that's very important, um, especially in the light that we do something called campus huddles. Campus, hud campus huddles are nothing more than 15-minute devotionals that we do every morning um, in, in our different schools around this area. And Hilton Head, we also have them there in Jasper and Hampton County as well. I don't want to discard them. Um, they, I think they do a great job as well. Um, I, sometimes I feel like Paul, or I work harder than everybody else. So. <laughs> but uh, but the, the point behind it is, 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 is that God allows me the opportunity to be able to um, just to share the love of Christ with these parents as well. It could be me just sitting in the stands watching the game and a parent noticed me, oh, I, I enjoyed you. You really got everybody praying. Um, um, at night or they'll pray after the basketball game they'll pray in the center court 
and everyone's there watching. And um, she a, a mom will tell me, you know, I really want you to talk to my boy, you know, and um, he's struggling with this, so he's struggling with that. Um, just an opportunity to during like holidays. I would usually let my coaches do the huddles throughout the year, but special holidays, I feel there's a need that the gospel needs to be shared during Easter, um, Thanksgiving time, um, Christmas time. And so I'll, I'll step in and actually share the gospel during those times. But the one-on-one, -on -one, just the other day, I was um, just got through practice. Coach, time I got to practice, coach called me up, you know, say a word to the guys, you know. So I shared with the guys, and then afterwards, they had to go in because of a lightning call. And I went over to the school, and here's this little kid sitting there waiting on their pal's um, recreation um, practice. Sat down on the sidewalk next to him, started talking, and um, he asked him what he was doing there. He said he had to leave a school because of a shooting that took place, which moved him to that school. And um, he said he went to church, and so I asked him a diagnostic question and just started sharing the gospel with him. Um, he he kind of understood the gospel, but didn't have the final nuances of it as far as, like, you know, the eternal perspective of, of the gospel. So I was able to, just to share those things with him. Uh, but it's all, there's always opportunities just to talk. You just got to be intentional about engaging people. You just got to go out and do it. So, Thank okay. you, Virgil. I appreciate that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move from left to right, starting with Victor. I believe each one of our, uh, our team leads here has a picture and a special story for you that they like to share. So starting with Victor. Victor, what is a specific story uh, of impact where you saw, saw God work in the Upwards ministry in your time serving in that ministry, if you would? Thank you, Walter. You know, by, by God's grace, we have a good reputation in, the, in our community. And each season we have those that are returning, and we also have many new families. And that just gives us as a church family an opportunity to serve and meet more families each season as they're doing something that they enjoy. With that, with that said, it does take a village to run a league of a size that you just watched in the video. For a small, a smaller sized leagues, it takes anywhere from 50 to 70 volunteers and as many as 100, 120 for a larger league. You know, as a director of sports ministries, part of my job is to also recruit, equip, and retain a team who uses the sports environment and step in, steps into opportunities for people to see, hear, and respond to the gospel. Jesus said in Matthew 9:38, Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Back to your question, Walter, where I saw God work, I see God at work every season when it comes to finding those laborers. And, you know, I pray this prayer every season uh, when we open up registration. And I got to admit, though, sometimes I do get worried about not having enough workers. But by God's grace and God's grace alone, no matter the size of the league, we've never had to turn away a child due to not having enough volunteers. And that is God at work every season. He's always faithful and always provides just the right amount of volunteers. Amen. Wes, what, what is a specific story of impact uh, where you saw God at work? And I believe you've been involved with Upward since its inception. Is that true? Or just thereabouts? Fairly, fairly close. Yeah, fairly close. So uh, if you would, please share a story uh, with us uh, where you saw God at work. So I don't have a picture for my specific story, but this is a picture of what uh, a devotion looks like at Upward. And so if you've never had a chance to work with any of our children's ministries here at CBC, you are missing out because our kids here at CBC know the Bible. They could probably teach you something. And so I mentioned that at practices, a coach is going to lead practice, I mean, lead a devotion. He's going to give a, uh, kids a chance to ask questions and answer questions. And so I remember as a coach, I would be leading a practice and um, I had some kids who were uh, not in church and they were asking some questions, some really good questions. And before I even had a chance to answer it, your kids started answering those questions really well. And that was so powerful to see 
kids, our CBC kids, being able to share their faith with some uh, kids who are not in church and to see how well they've been able to apply the things that we've been teaching them on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. And so my story really isn't a specific one, but just one that over time after time, I've been able to see our CB kids, CBC kids use upward practices and those devotions. It's just an opportunity to share their faith. And that was just really encouraging for me. Thank you very much, Wes. Mr. Bales, question to you, sir. What is a specific story of impact uh, where you saw God at work since you have been involved with uh, the Grace Ministry? Thank you, Walter. Similar to Victor, I do have a picture. And God at work is that group right there. So we had uh, a group here, most of them, that was, that was their first trip to Camp Grace. And I'll, I'll just say Jennifer and I, had a wonderful time with this group of young people. They worked diligently every day. There was no drama. They were cheerful. I just, they were a hardworking group. And it was a joy being with this group and taking this group down to Camp Grace. Um, every activity at Camp Grace, they have a specific purpose for it. And, and, and Charles Wade alluded to a portion of that. Um, over the course of the week, our activities were around meals, some of the group activities from breakfast through supper, as well as some of the um, uh, energizing activities that occur every morning and evening. <clears throat> but the night before the crosswalk, which is on Thursday, so the night before on Wednesdays, I believe it was, um, they have a foot washing ceremony where the counselors actually wash the feet of the children and then present them with a brand new pair of shoes. And this, this week we were there, there were all teens. And I'm sharing mostly from a guy's standpoint, watching young men because young men are always posturing. They're always wanting to be the big guy on campus. And the change that you see in these guys from Monday through the week is amazing. And on the night of the foot washing, <clears throat> there was a young man there who was in the crowd after Lucas had um, shared the gospel, um, who was crying, literally crying. And there was a group of guys around him, loving on him the whole time. That was just, it was moving. <clears throat> Well, the interesting thing was most of those guys that were supporting their friend who I found out later had lost both his parents in the last year. Um, a number of those young men made a profession of faith Thursday at the crosswalk. And a lot of those guys are, were in uh, Virgil's group. So we saw, at least in that instance, God working through every little step of the way. And it just reminded me that what is normal to us is not normal to someone else. And what our normal lifestyle we think is normal, we have no idea what other folks are going through, other young people are going through, what their home life is like, and we get very complacent. And it was awesome seeing the real heart come out in these kids as Charles Wade and the other counselors worked with them, and we were able to observe that. Thank you very much, Mr. Bales. Charles Wade, same question to you, sir. What is a specific story that you have where you saw God at work while you were uh, volunteering at Camp Grace? So this is the second year uh, that I have worked at camp for the whole summer. Uh, last year, um, I had a couple of young men in one of my cabins during a teen week. Uh, they were, I think they were 15 last year. Um, and both of them came from very troubled home situations. Uh, one of them from a completely broken family with just his mom. Um, very dysfunctional home situations for both of them. And they, uh, one of them was already a believer, one of them uh, became a believer on Thursday night of last year. Uh, both of them were really struggling. Both of them sought me out for some different things that they were going through. Uh, and I tried to encourage them as much as I could to continue uh, in the Word 
and in prayer and seeking out a mentor. Uh, this year, both of them came back and there's been a profound difference in both of them. Uh, a lot of the times we hear people asking, well, what, what can a week do to someone to really make a difference? Is it just, is it that simple? Just they accept Christ and that's it? Not exactly, um, but a lot of the times we will see these kids come who are very troubled. Uh, a lot of them are already uh, engaged with the justice system and having some, some trouble there. Uh, but they accept Christ, uh, and then the ones who have already accepted Christ, we encourage them to continue in their faith. Uh, and then as they continue to come over the years, we can see this change that God works in them as they try to grow in their faith, uh, and they get mentored by their ministry partners, and it's very encouraging to see that uh, what we do uh, in giving them the gospel does change their lives profoundly. Thank you, Charles Wade. Virgil, same question to you, sir. What is a specific story of impact that you have where you have seen God work while you were uh, working and volunteering with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? I, I tell you, I, I do have a couple of pictures. Just real quick about this picture right here. This is, this is the fullness of what FCA is right there. We, we, we have a, a missions pastor. Um, we, we have a, a founder of a ministry. Um, the guy that's next to my coach, he, he's a pastor in Tifton, Georgia. And then you just have me. I just, I just work with everybody. So God is just so good to me in that respect that he allows me to do that. But a specific thing that took place, this happened just the other night. It's usually at 9 o'clock, I'll be honest with you, I turn my phone off because I know if I don't turn it off, if it rings, I'm going to answer it. So, so I just shut it off at 9 o'clock, and I will flip it over because I don't see the light. Because if I see the light, I'm going to answer it. And I forgot to flip the phone over, and I was, I was writing a devotional. I do a lot of writing and talking to my baby, and she said, your phone's flashing. I was like, man, it's, it's 10, 15. I ain't answering that. And she said, no. She said, it might be important to answer it. And so I picked up the phone. Hey, man, we're having a Bible study, my wife and I. We wanted to ask you a question. I, I'm sorry to call you so late. I said, no, you're good, bro. I said, well, I should shoot. What is it? And we started. They said that they were in the book of Romans, chapter 3. I said, I love that text, um, what you guys got going on. And they were talking about ministering to people and their family and how they were at odds because the wife thought that, you know, you could— be saved and struggle in life. And the husband was saying, well, you know what? When anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. And he, he was talking in the fact that he knew that he was going to heaven. And it all boiled down to this. When I, as the more that I listened to the conversation, it, uh, it, came apparent that the, it became apparent that the wife struggled with her eternal security. She knew that she was saved but she struggled with her eternal security. And as I listened, I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? She said, yes. She said, because it's on the blood of Jesus Christ. I said, okay. I said, well, what about tomorrow? She said, I don't know. I said, why not? She said, because I want to make sure that all of my sins are covered. And when she said that, I said, you know, I said, the Bible teaches that when Christ died, he died for all of your sins, according to Colossians 2.13. And so I just started unloading scripture and just write this down, write this down, write this down. And so they wrote it all down, and um, she began to cry. And she said, you know, I, I wondered why my husband was so, like, I'm like, how can you be so presumptuous that you can go to heaven like that? And he said, I've been talking to Virgil. He's been sharing scripture with me. And, um, and, but she, her tears, she began to cry, but it wasn't tears of feeling like silly, but it was rejoicing. She said, I never heard this before. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, God wants you to reach people. I said, the enemy doesn't. I said, because you're saved, the Bible says that you have eternal life right now, John 5, 24. Eternal life is a relationship with Jesus Christ, John 17, 3. I said, and once you got it, you can never lose it. I said, now what's the next best thing that the enemy can do to you if he can't stop you from, from, from going to heaven? She said, stop me from ministering to people. I said, you're right. 
I said, if you're spending the majority of your time worrying about whether or not you're going to heaven, you're going to miss opportunities to be able to minister to people. I said, that's what he wants you to do. I thanked them for calling out. Man, we're so glad that we could call. I said, listen, anytime. <laughs> so it's just anytime, just call. We prayed. We hung up. And then I looked over at my wife. I said, there you go at that wisdom again. Answer that phone, boy. <laughs> and then we prayed. And, and, and you know, I, I, I put everything up that I had, and I just lied down. I said, Lord, I thank you so much for saving me and helping me to be able to navigate through these scriptures so that I can help other people. I'll leave you guys with this. When I first came here, I met Pastor. And I said, look, man, I ain't come to stay. I just want to learn the scriptures so I can go help my people. He said, fair enough. I was like 20 years ago. I ain't left yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Virgil. Victor, next question to you, sir. What is an ongoing prayer request that is unique to the upward sports ministry uh, in your time that you would take two minutes and go ahead and would you let us know? What's that ongoing prayer request that keeps coming up for you? Our prayer request is that God would continue to use us for his purposes and that he would enable us to keep creating the space where families and especially the participants would say there is no place I'd rather be right now when they're at practice or at the game. And also as our leagues are growing, so does our need for volunteers, for people that are willing to contribute their time and their ta talent for the Lord's work. So please keep this ministry in, and our volunteers, future, present, past, and your prayers. Thank you. Mr. Bales, same question to you, sir. What is an ongoing prayer request that you as a leader for Camp Grace would say that the Lord has put on your heart? Would you please share that with us? So Camp Grace, uh, right now, the capacity of the camp they have is maximum about 1,500 kids. Within the next two years, they want to up that to 3,500 kids a summer. Uh, to do that, they're going to have to build a completely new facility uh, and then every summer staff that facility. So uh, they would appreciate your prayers for uh, uh, financial support. Uh, it's very expensive to uh, go out on a venture like that, and then uh, that the Lord would continue to provide enough staff every single year to uh, make Pastor Dave's vision of 3,500 kids a summer happen. Thank you. Virgil, same question to you. What is an ongoing prayer request that you see that the Lord has put on your heart uh, as it pertains to fellowship of Christian athletes? Would you please share that with us? Yeah, I, I think one of the main things that, that we need is volunteers. Like, if you're, if, you know, maybe you were a cheerleader in school or, um, or you played in the band. Um, we're, just, we're just looking for people to come and, and who are willing to share the gospel, just be able to share with the students, um, just talk to them. A lot of it, to be honest with you, it, it boils down to the discipleship aspect of it. Um, just a lot of questions need to be answered and um, a, lot of, a lot of questions that, that these um, athletes have, um, the struggles that they face. Um, you, you get the calls all the time. It'd be nice to have some more people there who are willing to come alongside and answer some of the questions that they may have. And it's always financial. I'm always looking for supporters. If anyone wants to support, I'd love to have a conversation with you. So, Thank you, Virgil. Gentlemen, we have about four minutes left. So finishing off with Wes, uh, Mr. Wade Bales, and Virgil, you can bring us home. If there's one thing that you'd like to share with us about your ministry, how the Lord is using you, why you continue to return, uh, we know that prayer is important. Um, take this time now, and if you would, share with us, Wes, what, what, what continues to bring you back to the Upward Sports Ministry? Um, as Upward Volunteers, we understand that, you know, we are a representative of Jesus, and for a lot of the kids that come to us, we might be the only representative of Jesus that they have ever seen, and so we, we just really appreciate that opportunity, but we definitely ask for your prayer that God would give us wisdom and grace of, of doing that in a faithful way, that we would be accurate representations of who Jesus is. Thank you, Wes. 
Mr. Wade Bales, same question to you, sir. What continues to bring you back to serve at Camp Grace? Would you please share that and anything you'd like us to know? Going to Camp Grace and interfacing with young people from a different life and lifestyle is a reminder that everyone needs Jesus at different levels. And I'm a worker bee, and, and this ministry is a perfect fit to be that, providing support for the counselors and the leaders there at camp to put that program together. Um, my prayer is that, um, specific to this year's trip and past trips, um, and Virgil is a perfect example of, of this prayer is that when these young people are presented the gospel and like Charles Wade explained they accept Christ that's the beginning of a new life and they need support once they leave camp and that's where the ministry partners come in that's where FCA comes in that's where all of these 60 ministry partners that brought kids to camp come into play we need to pray for those ministry partners and supporting these kids when they're back home, when they're back in maybe desperate conditions or very difficult conditions to live in. Um, having some form or fashion of assistance in that process is what brings me back. Thank you, uh, Wade. Virgil, same question to you, sir. What is one thing that you would like us to know about your ministry, um, if you could tell us in 45 seconds, sir, you know, what is what does the Lord put on your heart? One thing you like to share with everyone about Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Well, it's for me, it's just 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all die, so that he who lives no longer lives for himself, but for the one who died and rose again on their behalf. I know where I was. I know where I was headed when Christ saved me. So I want to see people saved. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, as we draw to a close this evening, I'd ask first and foremost that you continue to pray for not just these men that represent the Upward Sports Ministry, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Camp Grace, but all of the volunteers, because it takes all of us. Um, as we go forth and carry the gospel and are charged with the Great Commission. And we do what we do, we do for him, and we do it for the kingdom in his name. So um, I'd, I'd ask and I'd implore you as we close after the Lord's Supper, these gentlemen will be outside in the atrium um, or around in here in the sanctuary. Stop and ask them a question or just encourage them. Pray for them. 